I, I'm like so upset because I felt like the intro was so perfect, but it's okay because it that is. is not a that is not an issue. We are here, we are live. This is episode five. We have the passion strategist. We got pretty boy day. Um, I'm super duper excited. Once again, I am going to have you tell the people exactly who you are and what you represent. Well, we're gonna start with ladies first today. Okay, well, salute to both my kings, and I appreciate that. Yes, this stays ready, so she don't have to get ready. I am the passion strategist, Ayana B, in these social media streets, and I'm here to help you with your personal brand, because whether you recognize it or not, whether you're in a nine to five or you're doing this entrepreneur thing full time, you are building a brand. So I'm going to help you with your brand. I'm going to help you in three steps. It's real easy. It's the three A strategy. It's the articulate it's the amplify and it's the authenticity for me. So if you're okay. looking for authenticity over applause in these streets, then I'm who you need to be with. Okay. Like authenticity over Period. applause. That's heavy. That's, that's what we do. Heavy. That's what we doing. Day. That's what we about to do in this conversation. But y'all gonna get into sure. it. And Day, let me know about you. Day, who are you? What's going on with you? What it do, baby? Listen, I'm pretty boy day, aka goddamn day, aka day Ramon. From the day to day podcast, I am an actor, an MC. Um, our podcast mission is to educate and entertain. We want to okay. provide both. We want you to laugh and we want to stimulate your mind. That's just what it is. Uh, we call ourselves the voice of the people. We pl provide a platform for the little people. We provide a platform for people that have something to say and don't know how to go about getting it out there. That is me. I'm true first. That's um, and I don't mind introducing myself. I don't know if I need an introduction, but I don't mind introducing myself. I am Truth Hurts. Um, I am somebody that jumped into this uh, podcast slash platform game by accident. I didn't mean to go viral. I didn't. I could have cared less. I was viral in my own world, respectfully. Um, I bring something to social media that was lacking, and that is the truth. And it's an unapologetic truth. And I am actually somebody that comes on these platforms and I'm successful off the internet, so I could give a fuck whether you like my opinion or not, because I'm going to be rich no matter what. So with that being said, right, I want to, yeah, yeah, I had it. Sometimes you got to just take it there. Um, I, I could go into all my different nicknames and, and all to egos and all of that, but the list is so extensive that we don't even have enough time on a podcast for me to tap into all of them, right? Um, the reason why I wanted y'all up here, right, um, and ladies and gentlemen that are watching this, you are in for a treat. And when I tell you that you are in for a treat, it's because I know that we do a lot of podcasts where we shoot the shit and we talk about a lot of things that are, they're relevant, but irrelevant in a sense. And I feel like we don't have enough powerful conversations. I don't feel like um, um, we talk to people who have liberal minds, which means that you're liberated, which means that you're free. These two uh, people that are on here right now are free. They have freedom of speech and they have freedom of, of, of mind and they are not trapped by the by the unnormal things that are normalized in society, if if I say so myself, um, I'm gonna take the back seat. I'm actually gonna let y'all run y'all movie. If y'all have questions for me, and then we just gonna go from there, and we'll start with the strategist. Is there anything that you would like to ask the truth? Absolutely. So listen, um, I'm gonna just say, as we talked about on multiple platforms between the three of us, um, my opinion is my opinion but I'm going to get into it and I'm not going to apologize for it. Okay. Um, ladies want to know, cause somebody said it's a, it's a room out here on these streets that you don't mind talking to the ladies and you don't mind if you got to catch beef to do it. Right. So the for ladies sure. want to know what's real in these streets. We talking about grown man. I got a job. I take care of my kids, my responsibilities, all the shit. So what's really a good driver. We talking about chemistry, connection, and compatibility, rank those in order. And tell us if they really matter. What does that look like to you as a grown man talking? Chemistry is everything. Um, uh -huh. I'm big on chemistry, right? And, and, and the chemistry, I think, is so important because chemistry doesn't grow on you. When you get around chemistry, you know exactly what it is. We're synchronized. We move at the same beat of the drum. Like, even down to the sex, if we happen to get there, it's like we've been here before. Chemistry, you can't fake that. And if the chemistry is too good, it can have you diving off the deep end because you like that. The, the comfort level is just there. You know what I mean? So things that you normally wouldn't do, you start to be like, well, maybe I can look past that because the guard is down. Um, connections are cool. Um, but I really feel like you can kind of damn near connect with anybody if you give them enough time. I'm not one of those people who you can't date me if I got to grow on you. 
So okay. maybe that could be my ego. Maybe I'm prideful, but I feel like if you don't know I'm the bar from when you first meet me, I'm not the person for you. I don't want to connect with you. We got to either have chemistry or you got to be damn near head over heels. And the last one was what? Compatibility. Ha. Ah, so compatibility is major. But then again, so this is this is what you have to understand, right? They say the opposites attract. Uh -huh. So so a lot of people will, will associate compatibility with having the same interest. And I disagree. I feel like there's some people that I'm probably not compatible with as far as finances or even emotional intelligence, but they may have some things that I lack. And I feel like in any relationship, I need balance. So in order to have balance, you have to outweigh me with things over here and I have to outweigh you with things over here so we can, you know, have everything stable. So that, that's how I feel about that. But let's move on for a second. Because okay. you, okay. you said something with that chemistry that got me thinking. Chemistry will have your ass walking off a bridge and you for might sure. just, be, you might ready to be go, go to the edge of the legend and take the jump. So sure. get into it because chemistry looks different from the perspective of acceptability for the men and the women, right? You, okay. the meter join, it's all the things chemistry, y'all, like you said, oh, if we, if we, if we smash, we get it in, it is what it is. I, if I follow the chemistry and I hit you, because <laughs> we smash too. Don't get it twisted. What? So if I smash you because the chemistry is giving what it's supposed to give, and I decide to leave you a couple dollars on a nightstand and be like, all right, I'll hit you when I'm ready right. for more day. Mm, let's get into the double standard of it because is chemistry cool for men and not for women? I've been smutted. Um, and, and that's maybe that's a Philly term or maybe that's a porno term, but I've been smutted before. Uh, and I and I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it made me feel afterwards. I felt used, I felt um abused and i'm gonna be honest i think that that left so how about we get off of, i'll get off of chemistry for a second and i'll give you the blueprint to why most people chase people um when you chase people is because of uncertainty right um mm -hmm. a, a lot of women and a lot of men once they know that they have you locked in they start to move different and the reason why they start to move different is because they're bored with you no one wants to play a video game that they already beat I know all of the levels. Everything is predictable. But when you're dealing with somebody, right, that you're uncertain about, it just always have you like, I don't know how far I can really take it because I don't know if they'll leave me or not. I don't know if they really deal with the bullshit. So when you really get somebody that can make you feel uncertain, I'm going to keep it all the way 100. This is the first relationship that I've ever been in that I haven't done it. I use it as a mental manipulation tool in relationships. I know that if I can make you feel like I love you, if I can show you that I love you, but still kind of make you question how much I love you, I'll always kind of have you wrapped around my finger because you like, I'll play, but I ain't going to play with him, play with him. But Because you got some women and some men out. Seriously, you got some men and you got some women out here that walk all over their partners because they know, man, she ain't going nowhere. She, ain't, she, she can't even live without me. She can't even survive without Where is she going? So I'm going to do what I want. But when you be like, man, I don't, I don't know if I can get away with that. It make you move a little different. So I'm big on uncertainty, uncertainty part of it. My fault. I like it. Come on, Dave. Chime in. What you got to say? Coming for you too, so, though. So, in the, so okay. Let's, let's, let me just, let's, let me be clear first. I respect your marriage. I love what you do um, in Black Love. And when I say I love what you do, when you go on your platform, it is a constant pedestal that your wife is on and I love the fact that you are not ashamed you don't hide it um she's always there she's in the mix if y'all look at the pictures going away he treats his queen like a queen that's not just what he says um but do you ever find a time where the things that you used to do in other relationships as far as the player status and stuff that you actually use in your marriage. You have to maybe catch yourself or like you just said, you give her a little bit and not just everything at once to have her thinking and wonder, do you actually find yourself slipping back into that mode in your present marriage? I, I would be lying to you to say that I didn't. I do. I, I absolutely do. Um, And I think it's just one of those things where it becomes a natural reflex. You know, we are who we are. You know, there's no way that I can be conditioned to be one way for 30 some odd years and then all of a sudden get married and everything that has helped me survive, everything that has helped me maintain, it just goes away. Um, but I think that I'm at such a maturity level mentally, I'm able to catch myself. But do I do it? Absolutely. And you know what's funny and, and, and it's crazy. I'm glad that you said that, right? Um, 
I develop this 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 mindset that everybody is expendable, right? Um, prison taught me that. Prison prison will snatch you away from everybody, and you have no choice but to accept the disappointment. You have no choice but to accept the things that you cannot change, right? And so I always told myself, you know what? When I'm in prison, I got to accept the women leaving, them playing games, this, that, and the third. But when you let me out on the street, it's my turn. And I have unlimited options. And I think as a man that is an attractive man, that is a successful man, that is a man with a gift of gab, when you start to have it your way for a long time, you do value women different. And I feel like when I got with my wife, I knew that she was everything. And I'm not talking about being married to her. I'm talking about in the dating, the dating stage. Uh -huh. I knew that she was everything that I was ever looking for because I took the time, right? I literally took the time to know exactly what I wanted. But there were parts of me you know, the old part that was hard to kill, like, you know, am I doing too much? Am I being too lovey-dovey? Should I pull back? Should I let my rotation go? Damn, I... Hey, you never close all your doors because you never know when you got to run back through them. But this is the mentality of somebody that's not really looking for it forever. So when I chose to get married, my, my ideology of it was you cannot be in a marriage or a serious relationship with a plan B. There's no way that you can say that you take your wife or take your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend serious if you go in it and secretly you have some type of evacuation plan because this means deep down inside you're always planning for an exit. So, ah. when, I, so, when, so when I went into this, when I jumped into this, there was no evacuation plan. You know what's funny? I emptied out one of, one of my bank accounts because when we first got together, a lot of people don't know she was the breadwinner. My wife is extremely successful. Um, and that's another thing that we're going to get into talking about successful women dealing with men that are less fortunate and they feel insecure. But when she got with me, I remember um, before we got married, she was like, you don't have to get me a ring. I love you. You don't have to get me a ring. I just want to be married to you. I just want to spend the rest of my life with you. Right. Um, and. It's so funny because I wow. see a lot of men. If a woman is really into you, she'll take a ring pop. She just wants that commitment, like right. And so, I, I I go to New York. I go to the jeweler. I take everything I got. Like I literally bought her ring. I had seventeen dollars. Matter of fact, you know what? Y'all want to talk today? I'll tell you how we met. This is the funny part. When I met my wife, right? This is so funny. I was actually leaving um the house of an ex girlfriend of mine. I was leaving the house of an ex girlfriend of mine. I had all. <laughs> Listen to this. I had all of my, I had all of my stuff in my trunk. I had all of my stuff in my trunk of my car or uh, whatever. I go into Herbalife. Anybody know me? I'm a fitness junkie. I'm a health freak. I, I go into Herbalife or whatever. I'm getting a shake. I didn't even like notice my wife because I'm not on that. Like I wasn't even on that. So I just overhear her talking about fitness. You know, I'm a hustler. So I'm a personal trainer. I'm like, well, damn, you in the fitness. You know, this is West Philly in me. I cut into her. Yo, you know, I'm a trainer, blah, 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 blah. I, uh, uh, so I go back. I said, well, what you drinking? Just me being me. She's like, I'm having this, having that. I cannot make this up to you, bro. I had $22 on my little car that I had. So I was really tricking in a sense because I bought her two drinks. You know, the tea is seven and the, and the shake is seven. That's 14. <laughs> my drink was seven. That's 21. It hurt me to do it. But it's just me being me. I don't know. I just feel like we had a good conversation. Let me get that for you. What's funny about us is we both in a sense, when we met, we were trying to hide who we both were to each other. So anyway, because she didn't want me to know she was loaded, I didn't want her to know I'm retired, street ball, play ball, uh, you know, philanthropist and everything else, right? And so when we met, it was with no no motive, no ill intent. We just started talking. We just started kicking it. Um, I was going through it with an ex. I'm going through it as far as finding out um, I had just started a new job, a new career, and things of that nature. And we literally were just cool. It wasn't no intent. We went out one night, uh, went to New York. I kissed her. She got weak in the knees. Maybe the room started spinning. I don't know. And we never left each other's side since. Right? And and but I But I say all of that to say... It was scary. It was definitely a, tra a a major transition for me because like I tell people, that was the first time ever in my life that I dealt with somebody who was in a better position than me. I've never dealt with that. So it's frightening because as a man, you only want your woman to, to see you as strong. And I told her that when I met her, I said, honestly, I like you. I'm digging you, but I don't know if I'm comfortable with you seeing me as vulnerable and, and as exposed as I am right now. Like, I want you to know the strong me. I want you to know fish scale fuse. I want you to know, like, I want you to know that bull. Like, you know what I'm saying? Pulling up right. in, them, in them 600 Benzes and all that. I want you to know him. I'm not cool with you knowing me in the Corolla.
And she, she, you know, she expressed to me. Oh, go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry. Go ahead. My fault. So, so in that, did you ever have a moment? Now, now I know that you're a man in every sense of the word. But did you ever have a moment where, not hating, but you was in in a in a in a mind space where you didn't like the fact that she made more and you didn't want it. Meaning you you didn't wish ill on her, but you wanted to be that guy. So maybe that yeah. business venture you wanted you wanted that business venture not to go through right now, so you could get one up on her. Never. Um, and I and I'll tell you why. Like I said, I was always the breadwinner in every single one of my relationships, right? Um, and I'm a winner, so winning is natural for me. And when you're a real winner and not a winner by accident, because you got some people that catch waves. I don't catch them, I surf them. Is a difference. You understand what I'm saying to you? So. I'm a win. I've been winning so long that I know how to lose, and I know how to lose and and accept other people that's winning around me without any malice in my heart. So no, there was never any like you know what my wife. I, I tell people the definition of a bad chick is one that can inspire you and motivate you and motivate you without saying a word. Just the way that she moves, just the way that she just goes through life so effortlessly and so graceful, right? Like you wouldn't even know she is who she is like you would never know like she just does it and she's one of the most caring and giving people but no i've never felt any hate any malice or any of that because at the end of the day she chose me so because women do choose the men if you didn't know that she chose me and this is what i this is the mindset there's something that has to be special about me because i can't afford you by a long shot <laughs> i can't I, I listen listen it's the funny thing and i tell people this because it's full exposure I remember going in a closet, right? Uh, one day, I think I was looking for like a towel or something. I stayed the night. And I remember going in a closet. And when I tell you every designer shoe, like I, I know designer. So I'm counting. I'm like, I'm like, I call my brother. I say, yo, I'm going to keep it 100. I might not have been able to afford her when I was in the street game, when I was in the drug game. I'm like, man, I just counted up <laughs> over $400,000 worth of shoes and purses. I can't afford no shit like that. And, but it, it never intimidated me because I'm that guy with money or without money. And that's one of the things that she's seen in me, extreme confidence. I would never be in competition with anybody that I deal with. I'm listening, though. All right, listen, man. Fuck all that. We got to stop playing with them strategists because that's easy for you. All right, listen to this. All right, so I got some questions for you. And the questions fall on the list. So we're going to give you one of the hard ones. And we're asking you, because you are where you are in your relationship, you are where you are in the entertainment business. So you ready? Okay. All right. So for question number one. And strategist, you can expound on this after you let him answer. Let him answer first and then expound on it. I want you to get him for real. Because this relationship seems to be coming easy to you. So we got to give you some more intricate questions because, yeah, I mean, you just running through this shit like it's water. All right, so listen. Is the portrayal of black love in the media and entertainment realistic or does it perpetuate a harmful stereotype? Black love exists. Black black love is real. I, I, I live in that. Like, I live in that in, like, real time. Like, black love is my reality. Um, I think that Black love is not protected enough. And when I say that it's not protected enough, it's not protected by the people who are actually in the relationship. When you talked to me the other day, right? Um, and, I, and we were talking about the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the in-laws, right? And remember, mm -hmm. I was telling you how I, if, if, if I don't like your in-laws, they're not allowed in my house, right? If I, like, if I don't get along with them or they disturb my peace, they are not allowed in my house, right? And I remember you was like, I, my wife's not going for that. I'm uh -huh. not going for that. But what you have to understand is my relationship with my wife trumps anything and everybody. Anything and everything. So it's our job to protect our love, to protect our peace. This is not a house. This is a home. And that's what a lot of people don't have. So when I tell you I don't like that energy and I don't want it crossing my threshold into where I'm safe, where because you understand, first of all, as a black man, I got to fight the police. I got to fight the ops. 
I got to fight. I got to fight. Just life overall. And then just me, just being me is a lot. Then I'm, then I'm famous. And I hate that word, please. I, I hate that I even had to say that, but I have a certain celebrity about me. My, you know, my energy is big. I got to fight the whole world. When I come into my house and kick my feet up, I should be able to, to do that. And nothing should be able to interrupt that. So black love does exist, but social media has ruined the idea for love, especially black people, right? Because we're easily influenced by the shiny things. Social media, right, is nothing but a highlight reel. When these people put these phones down, they're dirty in real life. They're broken in real life. They're unhappy in real life. They're unsuccessful in real life. And so if you base your marriage, if you base your marriage, if you base your relationship on social media, it, 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 it's it's bound lose. to fail. It's bound to fail. And the reason why it's going to fail, and that's another thing with love, right? People base what love looks like off of these highlight reels on Instagram. If a man does not buy me a Birkin, he does not love me. If a man cannot take me on a private jet, he does not love me. Like they got the fog. Like even like if you watch enough social media, if you don't got a six pack, a big dick, if you ain't got lipo and a fat ass, you feel like you don't even know what love is. We done turn love into a, an aesthetic instead of a feeling. It's not a look. It's a feeling. It's a pause. It's a heart. Like don't. But anyway, that's an easy one. Next. I'm gonna take you in. I'm gonna I'm I'm take you to the left with that because love is more than a feeling. How about okay. this? It's more than a feeling. A love is an action word. I know y'all heard that before, but let's get into it. The reason why y'all don't appreciate it is because you feel like you got access to it on every level. And I'm talking to the men right now. All right. Okay. So whether you are a, a dude that's locked up now, whether you a dude like all right, truth will tell y'all in a minute his story. It was twenty five hundred just to come see him. God so right. your 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 balls is that big, and you 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 can't even come see me freely, right? But y'all feel like y'all got access to stuff at every level. So if you still locked up, when you just come home and you gotta literally have somewhere to stay, and you gotta check in with your PO, or you you got a job for the first time in your little life, so you think you know you 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 doing a little something because you got two weeks every two weeks you got a little paycheck coming in, or you leveled up, you sitting in the seat where truth is sitting, you still feel like you got your choice and you got access at every level. And the problem with that is we need to understand that we actually control your access. So if your access starts getting denied, it might switch the way you it flip the switch in terms of the way you think about love and what it is and what it feels like and what it says and what it does and how it shows up. Y'all think. Y'all know what it is. But like my girl said in Boomerang, she said, love should have bought your ass home last night. Y'all ain't got no home. You said a house is a, a the difference between a house and a home. Yeah. You tell me y'all don't know the difference. Here's the, the here, difference. Here's the problem, though. Matter of fact, it's not a problem. Everything you said is 100% correct. Mm-hmm. The issue is y'all don't know that. You might know that, but you're one of the few. So as long and we and we talked about this when I was in the hot seat. As long as you allow it, it will be done. So you said Absolutely. we have access. I'm not saying that we're, we have, saying that we're we, in control. We're yeah, in control. You, so it's our job to deny your access. It's our job to teach you what it takes to access. So here's the thing: I can give you a key, but if I never teach you how to use the key, you still can't get in. So my thing is, it's levels to this thing that we call love, especially in the black love culture. And we need to redefine that. We need to re- review it and revitalize the whole concept of what love is and then put that into the culture of black love. It's well, not the a first thing that you have to understand is that love looks differently for everybody. And love, does. Is not, love is not a one size fit all shoe, first and foremost. And Absolutely you also not. have to understand that. Right. This is this is the gag about love. Right. A lot of times, I, 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 let me break it down on a deeper level. I tell people that love is not like trouble. And they say, truth, what do you mean by that? I say, if I go outside of my house right now and I go look for trouble, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to find the shit out of that trouble, right? Easily. <laughs> I can literally go outside and find trouble right now. The reason why you cannot find love as effortlessly is because love is often confused as the things that you went without, right? So if you were a broke female your whole life, and you come into me and I got money and I spend it on you in an abundance, you're going to say, oh, my God, he loves me. If you're somebody that has never been cooked for, if you're a man that has never been catered for, if you're a man that has never got oral sex from a woman and all you're used to doing is missionary, you meet a chick that freaked you out, you're going to confuse that with love. So we can't just put a, a one size uh, umbrella over everybody and think that it blocks all the rain. It doesn't work like that. Love, a lot of, uh, first of all, if you ask somebody what is love, they can't explain it. 
they'll give you all of these uh all of these fairy tale or all of these uh platform definitions of it but they don't really know what love is and that's why we talked about can you be in love with two people at the same time and i said absolutely not because the heart doesn't work like that you even if, if you have two children you love one more than the other but nobody want to admit that they'll be like oh yeah. no, I love my kids equally you got a favorite and so when you talk you don't about love your kids equally, you love your kids differently listen, listen you can listen, absolutely listen, love exactly. multiple children a but you love them differently. but you got one that you love more than the other rather you want to but here's the thing not. talking about that different expression of love right okay if you love you a certain way that's going to dictate how you in turn love somebody outside of you and some that's of us self -worth. That's, that's self worth that's men and women if you don't know the definition of love as it pertains to turning that inward on you, then you definitely won't have the skew trying to find somebody outside of you to love on, be in love with, and all of the things. And so when I come out as a woman, and I'm coming out of, let's say I'm coming out of a long-term relationship, right? And this is for both of y'all. I'm coming out of a long-term relationship. I basically have been conditioned into being a serial monogamous, right? Because women, we enjoy monogamy. We do. Now, we get break a face that to the down, but break, but Hold on. Break that okay. word, serial monogamy. Because there's some people who don't have That's an extensive vocabulary. <laughs> no, I'm be, no, I'm not. I'm not being funny. I, I, I'm being. I'm rocking with you. I'm rocking because, with you. That's no, because what, because what I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand is if you watch social media enough. Our people and other people hear a lot of words that they do not have the solid definition for. So Thanks. like when they say narcissist or monogamy or right. platonic and things of that nature, these aren't yeah, words that are used commonly in our environment. So when you say a serial um, monogamous, monogamistic part me person, can you please elaborate on exactly what that is then go? Absolutely. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna bring it right to where y'all live. Y'all watch Dexter. Y'all watch all this stuff on Netflix, and you hear about a serial killer, right? That's something they do habitually, continually. It's something that drives their every day. That's the reason why they get up. You serial with it, okay? You're consistent with it. It's something in you that you can't even explain that drives you to do that action, right? So marry that with monogamy. Monogamy is being in that relationship with that one person, being in that um that that head space and that heart space, and all of your emotions spill out one and for this one person. And some of us have been turned into a condition to be serial monogamous. Why? Because we're afraid to live alone. We're afraid to be alone. We're afraid to not be in love. We're afraid to find out who we are outside of somebody else's definition of who we are. We're afraid to speak up and say, I don't like that shit. Or I mm. do like that shit. You know what? My man won a threesome. Guess what? I'm really into that shit for real, for real. But I'm trying to be a lady. Like, it. listen, we're taught and conditioned to dumb down our sexuality, our integrity, our intelligence, all of the things to push somebody else to the front. That's called humility on the social media streets when in actuality is actually dumbing down the real me. And I'm here for authenticity over applause in these streets. We don't have time anymore to keep showing up as somebody else's definition of who they think or who you think they want you to be. Because guess what? You, once again, you're still going to miss it. You're still not going to find love. You're still not going to find fulfillment. And you're not going to get what you're looking for because... Yo, what a real slim shady, please stand up. Who the hell are you? Which one of them? I'm dealing with you, your representative, your twin, your clone, your cousin, the 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 the, the chick that the last dude that you was with wanted you to like, who am I dealing with? And so you gotta mm. stop being embarrassed and ashamed of showing up as who you are, speaking up and saying your piece. If you agree with it, cool. But if you don't, cool. As long as you Do can you stand by what you say, I'm all for it. You can listen. Do you know why tell people me right now, you a lesbian. If I'm a lesbian, if he gonna put that out there, he better give me a reason. He better be able to justify and define why are you putting me in that box. And that still do you, doesn't mean that I gotta do agree with. Do you know why it. people are afraid to show up as who they are? Tell us truth and and talk to the women. Why are we afraid? Like, like are we men, men, and, men and women, though, right? The reason why people are afraid to show up as who they are is because they don't like what they see and who they are when they look in the mirror. So why would they ever believe that you can? So when we get down to people even going on these dates and we talk about the representatives, right? Like, why, why, why did he act like this? Or why did she act like this in the beginning? This is because I have to put on my, 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 my makeup. I have to put on my facade because if I show you the real me, you wouldn't like me, or at least I don't believe that you would like me for me. How many women, and we can talk to the women, how many women have laid down with some lackluster penis a man that is not even visually attractive to you like that, but you took a chance because you really liked him for him, and he got this false belief. Let me let me let me matter of fact, you know, we're gonna backtrack it, right? I, I'll get on me. I like to do me. I don't like to do other people. I like to do me. I remember messing with this girl, right? Um, and I was like, Yeah, because you like me because I got pretty hair and straight teeth. She was like, I be honestly, 
I'm Spanish. That don't do it for me. Every man that I've ever talked to had pretty hair and straight teeth. She was like, that's not what I like about you. She was like, I actually like that one patch of hair that go this way on the back of your head. And I'm like, out of all, out of all of this, that's what <laughs> turned you on? And, and what you have to understand, people like you for their reasons. They don't like you for the reasons that you like you. So if you're going into anything thinking, oh, well, they like me because I got dreads down on my back or they like me because I'm pretty boy. Dead. You don't even know. People uh, love the awkward shit about you. My grandfather taught me something so special. He said that when you meet a woman, if you can fall in love with the things that you dislike about her, then everything else after that is nothing but rainbows and unicorn. So people don't show up as their self because they don't like their self. How can I expect you to love me when I don't love me? How can I expect you to like me when I don't like me? How could y'all accept me when I don't accept me? And that's what's wrong with people. And that's how we get into self-sabotaging, right? That's how Come we get into self-sabotaging, especially these black women, right? Because this is this is the gag. You're so used to toxic relationships. You're so used to being beat up verbally, physically, emotionally, and, and, and in every other way, right? You finally get a good man. You know, you say the Sierra prayer. You get the man that you've been waiting for, right? Right the man that you manifested, right? The man that you prophesied, right? You get him right in front of you, and you don't know what the fuck to do with him because he's too good to be true. So you tell yourself, oh, my God, there's no triggers. There's no red flags. This ain't right. This ain't for me. And you trick yourself out of decent situations. And this is what self-sabotage is in its greatest form. And we've all done it. Whether y'all want to admit it or not, because I've, I've done it. I'm still trying to do it, and I'm happily married. So that's how I know y'all do it. Because I have my days when I'm in my car, and I start to feel too grateful, and I start to feel too blessed. And I'm like, I'm not used to blessings, and I'm not used to good things happening to me, and I'm not used to life going my way. So let me let me revert back to what I know. Let me revert to my mm -hmm. space. Let me, let me push her away, and let me push this away, because secretly, maybe in my mind, I'm going back to jail. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't have made it. Maybe I'm, I'm feeling survival's remorse, survival's Definitely. guilt right because i shouldn't have made it why me why did i get to make it i didn't do anything differently than you 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 were none of y'all but it came to a point in my life damn i just got heavy it came to a point in my life right that i realized why not me that's why it not me but go ahead though. i'm listening to my fault i just no I that was there. good that was good and it was necessary that was good and it was necessary so day when you think about because you didn't have your escapades and shenanigans with more chicks than we care to count right yeah. now but when, when you think about the ones that you felt like were game worthy, meaning you chased them versus the ones that you played with, because mm. you thought they was, I don't know which, I don't know what the hell you thought, but what made the difference? Um, I'm a, I got to be honest, like, like he said, keep it to myself. It, there was no difference. Um, this particular one just didn't fall for my shit. Like I put it on her too. But she just didn't let me go. I tried to leave. She wouldn't let me go. So mm. I don't, I, I'm sorry, but I don't have a story where I could say, you know, I was just so much in love and I, you know, I, 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 I you know, she was just my princess queen. I don't have that. I, I tried to play the shit with her and she was like, nigga, where, where you going? She knew my social security number. She knew everything. I didn't even know my social security number. And she just knew that. She was just one of the ones. When I went to go talk to other girls, they was like, oh, no, I can't talk to you. You belong to so-and-so. I'm like, oh, no, how do you even know her? So she 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 put all that shit on lock. I, I was still playing, but she ain't let it she ain't let it go down like that. So that that's what brings me to my next question, which was, you know, you talked about the doors being open and, you know, y'all have the key and it's up to y'all to give us the key. But we don't really need the key because all the doors are open. Like today's generation of women um, is just so easy. Y'all open your legs and your mind to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and then y'all get upset when y'all don't get the results that you want. Y'all accessible to everybody. You're not just giving the key to one guy. Everybody got the doors just open. Anybody can just walk in. So let me change. Then, let me change the language on that. It's it, there's a difference between accessible. And susceptible. I'm about to break it down, truth, because I heard you. I heard you. accessible. You can get in and out of a place, a person, a thing, whether it's the, the the head space, the heart space, whatever. Susceptible. That means you're open to. You're more likely to be impacted or affected by. Some people are more susceptible to COVID. Some people are more susceptible to diabetes based on lifestyle, based on health conditions and, and generational things and genes that they had that run in their family. So here's the deal. 
I am not accessible, I might be more susceptible because if I'm coming out of a relationship that wasn't shit with a dude who wasn't shit, who didn't show me shit, didn't teach me shit, and didn't treat me like shit, then all I know is the bullshit. That's all I know because I, I haven't been exposed to a better way yet. Once I come into a place, once I come into an arena where I understand that, that first of all, that ain't even... I don't even know what I was doing over there because that's not my people. But when I get into the place where now this is the type of man that I would potentially make a life partner or that I would go into some type of collaboration with business. Stop right there. there. Stop right there. That's where I want you at. You finally see a man that you see yourself with that you feel as though will treat me how I want to treat. You see every single trait that you want in a man. Mm -hmm. But what is it about you that is going to make that man say, you know what? I'm going to give her all of me because I am that man. And I know I'm that man when your door is open and everybody else done ran in and out of it. Why am I going to want to give you, you that just hung a whole left. that you want? You just hung a whole left. But I'm going I'm to put it to you like this. When I'm 21 and I'm young and I'm wet in the ass and I don't know no better. And I think that that's the definition of love because I never had anybody as a child tell me, teach me, show me, demonstrate role models for me. No, this is actually what love is. And no, this is actually what that nigga's really saying. Let me, let me teach you the code, the cheat code to the game, right? When I know better, I do better. And let me tell you something. The problem with y'all is y'all love living and operating by this double standard. So y'all niggas can run through everything. 20, 30, 40, 50, y'all still running through everything. And you think you a fucking prize. When I become a woman, when I become a grown woman and I hit 30, I hit 40, I start to achieve stuff, attain stuff. I realize that it's not about what I can maintain or what I can obtain, but it's about what I can maintain. And I start to have a level of a standard of living and thinking and being for myself. You can't tell me shit. I don't give a damn how many bodies I got. I'm still the shit. I'm gonna lean into this camera and I'm gonna look you in your face, pretty boy day. And I'm gonna let you know, nigga, you want it. How do I know you want it? Because this shit you can't get at the poppy store. You can't get this wisdom. You can't get none of this sapio and baby. She's more than a sapio. She's sexual too. And you can't get none of this unless I give you access. Is your access granted? That's the question. And some of y'all ain't even willing to put your key in the lock. And even if you do put your key in the lock, baby, who said it was going to turn? So, so, so what we... advice would you get women? What advice would you give the, the younger women of this generation now so that they can reach that mental status without it ain't, about, it, the it ain't about notes to my younger self. It's about notes to, no, no, to, the, not to your younger women self. like me. Nah. Women, women I, like I, me I, who got to go back and who literally got to model it. You got to do for you what wasn't done for you. So Because these young girls, just like these young guys, they not listening to nothing you got to say. They watching how you move. And so you need to move different in front of them so they can understand and get the point. And hopefully they get it a little bit sooner than you did. It ain't about so, nothing that I was saying. I gotta tap in. I gotta interject. I have to interject, and I tried to sit here, but it, it was it was uh, getting me. I see so are you saying? You know. <laughs> are you saying right? Because I just want to be clear. I'm big on clarity. Uh -huh. Are you saying that it does not matter how many sexual partners a woman has, as long as she believes in her mind that she's still the shit? That's kind of what you said. And um, I am. And okay. I am. So let me let me let me. Uh, First and foremost, right? Because that that's a that's a, a self proclaimed thing, right? You can't. Oh, absolutely. It's like me, let me let me finish. Let me cook. You can't. I can't say I'm the goat. The streets got to say they got to say that. I can't. You know, I can say it, but it's self proclaiming. And then when you self proclaim, who's going to talk down on itself, right? Um, realistically, a high body count does it matter? Yes, it matters because if a man. A, a man with real standards and morals, because men with real standards and morals, they're exclusive. Everybody can't get their penis. So there's no way that you could ever think that I'm going to deal with a woman that every that everybody has had their penis in. Um, but down to thinking that a woman is the ish with a high body count. That's cool that she thinks that because that is her mind. She is allowed to think that. But it's, it's like if, if you have you are we all from the hood? We all know that guy who didn't have no money growing up, but he got his shit together later on in life. Right. And to some people who meet him at where he's at, he the shit. But for the people that knew him as Wayne Wayne Dookie stain with the shit stains and the balled up <laughs> sneaks and with the gap ass teeth, we'll never unsee that. He'll never not be that corny nigga from 53rd Street that we made fun of. And we know for real, for real, he got a lot of money, but he smell like shit. And he probably still got them shit stay like. So it's like 
even though you are who you are to you and maybe you move, maybe you go somewhere different. But my thing is there are some people in his life, once they view you a certain way, no matter how much work you do, no matter how much healing you do, no matter how much you change, they're going to always remember you for exactly who you were. And if people don't believe that, it's the same for guys that go to prison 10, 20 years. They are not even the same person. But, but some people are stuck in time and they come home and you'll die from something that you did 20 years ago because they don't respect the job now. They don't respect the growth. They don't respect the healing. So I get it. You feel like, yeah, I leveled up. And if a man can't accept this and accept that, and that's cool because there's some people that's going for that. But then there's some people like, yeah, that shit sound right, but you ran through. Like all of that shit sound cool, but we still know you smut ass little Shonda from around the way. Like that shit, I'm, I'm not, I don't think you're worthy. And, and, and that's a preference. Cause you got some men that like women that, I mean, that don't mind. You got some men that are like, I don't care if she 9,000 dicks in, she mine, I love her, I'm 9,001 and I'm cool with that and I'm a sloppy kisser and treat her like it's brand new. And if that's your thing, I'm not discouraging that. And I don't judge people, right? Um, I take that back. I do judge people. I would be lying to say that I don't judge people. You would be right. a fool not to judge people, right? Because this is how you figure out who to have around you and you know right. what, what, what needs to be around you, right? Um, but I'm not quick to place certain names on people. And, and I'm very squirmish when it comes to the word whore. And the reason why I am is because that I've learned that people have selective judgment. And what I mean by selective judgment is, if you fuck 50 men, you the biggest slut that they've ever seen, right? But if their mom did it, cause your mom got seven different baby dads. We, we, right. Why can't we talk about that? You, you, you respect your mom to the utmost. You never called your mom a whore. You never called your mom a slut. Uncle Ray Ray and, and, and Uncle Tommy ran a train on your mom back in the day. But, but, but that, that's, uh, that's, the, that's unheard. I bet you make an excuse for it. The same thing with murderers. If somebody kill your baby right now, oh my God, he was a good kid. That nigga robbed everybody and shot everybody up and down City Line Avenue. But when it, when it was your turn, now all of a sudden it was your baby. So I've learned that judgment is very selective. Um, <laughs> my fault. I got off a topic, but go ahead. My fault. Go ahead. Get, get your no, you off. good. But here's here's what here's what I, I drew from everything that you said. Either you got to make a decision at some point, right? Whether you still lock up or you no. free in the streets, you got to make a decision as to whether or not you're gonna be limited by people's labels for the rest of your life. And sure. it keeps you from leveling up. So the bottom line is, you either going to be limited or you're going to be unlimited. It's your choice. I don't sure. give a damn what they think. I don't give a damn what they say. Who going to do me better than me? Period. Nobody. Everybody Nobody. got a story. Everybody got a history. Everybody got chapters in their past. Like you said, somebody going to remember me from second grade. Somebody else going to remember me from the day that they stepped into the ring and they was like, oh, she not want to be played. Listen, if you choose to stay back there, Cool, thank you, because that's one less person that I got to use my selective judgment on. Nigga, thank you, step to the side, make room for the real niggas to step up. Like, I, what we talk about? But for y'all to act you. like, as men, for y'all to act like y'all really don't take these women seriously, for y'all to act like y'all still don't be, because here's my thing, y'all still chasing. If I give you access, if the access is granted, you still going to hit it. So let's be clear. Let's be clear. Y'all can talk all the shit y'all want because that's what y'all do. Y'all talk just as much, if not more, than women do. But let's be clear. Way more. Y'all will wife it. Y'all will life it, and y'all will love it. Yes, you will. Because you know what's it, funny. It comes wisdom. She gonna learn some shit along the way, and she gonna perfect the game, and she gonna show up different, and she gonna level your ass up with her. So you gonna you know get all the benefits funny? of that. I tell men, and men look at me crazy when I say this, right? And, and, and you know what, males. Look at me crazy when I say this. Whores make the best girlfriends. I'm not saying wives. I'm saying girlfriends. So they're going to grind me up for this, but I'm cool with that. And, and it hit me as a youth, right? I was like, I tell people, whores make the best. And like, what do you mean? She's a whore. I said, you have to understand, a whore has been around every type of man. So she knows how to adapt. She knows when to suck your dick, when to rub your back, when to, when to massage your temples. When, like, she's like, she, like, she specializes in men is the experience that you talked about, right? And but you said that these men will still hit you. Absolutely, they'll fuck you. But fucking you and marrying you is not the same thing. Fucking you and taking you serious is not the same thing. And I don't think that men don't take women who are very promiscuous. I don't think that it's her past that stops them from taking her serious. I think that it is the image, right? I think that it's us, men like us, like, damn, you taking her serious, you know damn well, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, Drea, I don't know if y'all familiar with her. I don't, oh my God, man, I said a name. But anyway, there's a famous celebrity right now, right? Because I don't do no name driving. I'm, I'm not, we, we celebrities, fuck all of that. Um, but there's a famous celebrity right now. Um, she's 39 years old. She's dealing with a 22-year-old basketball player, extremely uh -huh. successful, 
Young boy got the bag, handsome, all of that, right? And the internet is tearing her to shreds. Oh, you cradle robber. Oh, you this, oh, you that. And my thing is this. First and foremost, 97% of the women that are saying something about it, you don't have any 22-year-old ballers checking for you, let alone millionaires freshly off the draft. Because if you could, we all seen Stella got her groove back. Straight like Thanks. that. So a, a lot of a lot of them women had some shit to say. You don't even got the niggas in your age bracket checking for you, let alone Thanks. trying to get you pregnant or take you serious. Don't hate the player, hate the game. But it was a lot of men. It was a lot of men, all oh, young blood. You know she did this, you know she did that, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's it's sad, right? Because he's a young man and that's gonna get to him. Public humiliation or a public image, people will literally sever their strong relationship based on what other people think. So men are not afraid to be with whores because of the amount of men that she slept with. Men are afraid to deal with those type of women because of the backlash and the things that they're gonna have to hear because they can't make a conscious decision to say, well, you know what? If she a hoe, she my hoe. You can't hit her now. You probably could have hit her then, but not anymore. But anyway, what's up? Talk to me nice. Hey. I so I had a question, right? But you done went. I now I got. I'm sorry. <laughs> wow, we not doing you the power. Gave me a head full now. So I, now I got all these other. All right, no matter of fact. So we hit her. On, 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 we've talked about that many times. So I'm gonna try to. I want to bring it back to um, marriage. I want to bring it back to um, your personal growth when I ask this question. Okay. And I'm only asking this question because for other. Uh, people that want to get married for other people that are married, you know, that way we can provide some insight for them. So this question right here um, is for you. Reflecting on your journey, what role has self-love and individual growth played in enhancing the collective strength of your marriage? So in other words, all, everything that you've been through from where you was to where you are now and growing and loving yourself how has that helped you and made your marriage better? You know what's crazy, right? Um, in our society and just the world overall, self-love is frowned upon. Um, people won't admit it, but she has said something that was so pivotal. Uh, pivotal. She said that if who's going to love you like you love you, right? But when you overly love yourself, you're called cocky, you're called conceited, you're full of yourself, right? You are, it's frowned upon to have unlimited love for you, right? And so for me to answer that question, I actually have to rewind time, right? Um, Growing up, I looked different, right? I had, I had curly hair, um, was chubby, um, I could sing, I could rap, I could tap. Yeah, like, I didn't even know, right, that these were things that made me unique. So I had an older brother, right, Um, who wasn't as talented as me. He wasn't even um as attractive as me. And so he, as a youth growing up, you know, when I would sing, oh, that's what faggots do. So it made me stop singing. I could rap, oh, that, that's what suckers do. I didn't want to rap. I had curly hair, oh, that's what faggots got. I wanted to slick my hair down because I was ashamed of having it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you you wow. talk too much. Shut up. Won't you be quiet, right? Uh, 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 you, you're funny. That's what faggots do. Every Everything that was a strength for me, I was taught that it was a flaw, right? Um, and so growing up, right, um, even now with me being on this platform, right, um, there's a lot of backlash. There's a lot of scrutiny. There's a lot of criticism, right? And I'm so grateful for what my brother did. I didn't understand it at the time, right? Because a lot of times when we're going through like real traumatic shit and we're being traumatized and we're being ridiculed, um, it can do two things, right? It can, it can break you or it can turn you into a fucking animal. And so it turned me into an animal. So now when I speak, now when I walk into a room, my head is up because I had to believe in me more than anybody else did because I was tricked into believing that the things that made me special were a weakness, right? So I had to recalibrate myself. I had to rebuild myself. And so I had to get to a state of mind of, you know what? Yeah, I can sing and I, and I can rap and I can dance and I am attractive and I'm not going to apologize for it. How did it help me in my marriage, right? Um, it helped me in my marriage and the man that I am because I'm able to love my wife unapologetically. I'm able to post my wife unapologetically. I know that loving her is not, is not a weakness. It's not a vulnerability. It's not a kink in my armor. But if anything, it's a strength because not only does it speak volumes about who I am, but it speaks value, volumes about who she is. You know, you get a lot of people out here, right? They act as if they're proud of the person that they deal with. They act as if they're really in love with the person that they deal with, but they don't know the first thing about it. So my wife, right, when I talked about balance and not to get too far off of that, right? 
I, she she says she sits back and watches me, right? She literally watched me. Um, I don't know if you knew the story, but like I told you, I was I was at a battery uh, battery plant. I was at a battery plant. I was making I was making some decent money, especially for a five time felon. Um, and it was my first job ever as an adult. I got my first job ever as a thirty something year old adult. I've never wanted a job. I thought I was going to die before the age of eighteen. I didn't even think that I was going to be this old. I had no plans. I was living on the edge. I've been locked up for everything from first degree murder to attempt murder, uh, kidnapping and everything else under the sun. So that's the other thing that you don't know about me. I've been shot over six times. I can go on and on. I've lived a hell of a life. I did three years in Supermax, right? That's that's the, uh, in the shoe. So that's the super housing unit, um, special housing unit. That's 55 and a half lockdown. So what that means is six months of the year, you don't come out your cell because they expect for you to come outside at five o'clock in the morning, shackle from your waist to your ankles and go outside and stand in the cold <laughs> for 45 minutes and you got a shower shackle. But that's a whole nother story. Um, but back there is where I really found myself. Um, it's a very high suicide rate back in the special housing unit, right? Because you don't have no TV. You have nothing. You've never read a newspaper front and back the whole thing. You've never, and then and then flipped it back over and read it from the back to the front again. You've never been that bored, right? So when you're back there, you got a lot of time to think. You have a lot of time to internalize yourself. And like I said, the suicide rate is extremely high because when a lot of people get to know their self, they don't like who they get to know. So I sat back there, right? I remember, and I, I'm so off topic, but I would work out, right? I would oh, work out because a, lot, a, a lot of people don't know that I was 400 pounds. So that's another thing that people don't know. I was 400 pounds, right? Uh, and people say, how did you get the dedication to get in shape like that, right? And I tell them there was a plethora of reasons, right? And the, But the two main ones was I wanted to survive. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You threw me in prison. I'm going to tell you a funny story. This is crazy. Y'all got me revealing it all today. Um, I was beefing with some guys from the street or oh, whatever. Um, and I was 18 years old. I went to jail for first degree murder, first degree attempt murder. Um, and I didn't know that people even worked out, right? Like I didn't even have a clue, but you know, this is a jail thing. And I, and mind you, I've had more years in prison than I've had on the street. Actually, February 25th of this year has been the longest I have ever been on the street in my life, except like, like from 10 years old. I've been going to prison since I've been 12 years old. I have damn near 18 years in the prison sentence and I'm not for in, in, in the prison system and I'm not 40 years old. I've been home for two years and some change now, the longest that I've ever been home. Um, and I say all of that to say, they threw me in here with wolves with some crazy charges and they threw me in here with wolves out of town. I wasn't in my jurisdiction. So you have to understand, and it was a high profile case. Whoever passed away, it was somebody that was beloved. So I'm getting drama from all angles, but I'm going at it with 35, 40 year old men. I'm an 18 year old kid. I'm, you know, I was what I was. And so it's funny because to know me, I'm gonna put the pressure y'all to pictures later. I had a curly top, no beard, no facial hair, no nothing. 400 pound Dominican fat looking nigga. That's what I look like. Shit, a big ass teddy bear. That's what I look like. So they throw me in here and I probably look like I was sweet for it. Like I probably did. So, you know, they tried it. Um, and they so anyway, I get into working out because one day I'm, I'm I'm walking to a visit and I'm walking past the yard and this dude I won't say his name I, I think he's still alive but anyway the nigga Diesel and he like yeah I'm gonna see you I'm gonna see you when you get back from the visit I'm like what the fuck is under that nigga shirt like, I ain't never seen no shit like that you see what I'm saying so I'm like well hold I'm like hold up so I come back from the visit right I come back from the visit my man worked out heavy I said bro I I gotta get right so I start working out I'm working out I probably do it for about nine months. I don't even really see the transformation because that's how it is like when you're working out, you know what I mean? But I knew my shit kind of got a little up. So they having a softball game one day. I seen from all the way across the field. I'm running across the field. I'm throwing my shirt off while I'm running. I run up. I'm like, Sai Lake, am I? He like, oh, I see you, big fella. I'm like, yeah. So then that was one of the reasons why I got in shape to, uh, to survive. But I also dealt with a real nasty heartbreak. I dealt with a real nasty heartbreak and I felt like she played with me and I said, you're going to eat your motherfucking heart out. So I went in 400 pounds. I came out 205, six pack beard waves. Uh, it was just, a, it, it, that's a whole, but anyway, let, let's get back to the topic. I apologize. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> so, so, so you, had, you went to touch on um, how your confidence and personal growth has helped your marriage and, 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 and her, um, and you loving her better, her sitting back watching you. Um, since you got into your marriage, has your growth continued? Or do yes. you feel as though like you've already reached your plateau? No, not even. I'm not even 10% of where I'm going. I'm not even, like, like I told you, when I, when I roll over in the morning, 
and I look at my wife, it, she is just something about her glow. It's just something about her calmness. It, it just makes me want to get up and strive and be better every single day. Like I literally look over at her and, and, I'm, thinking of, and, I, and I'm thinking of ways to get her a private jet. And it's not about money. But and I'm thinking of ways to get so much money that they're crushing up rose petals as she's walking. And I want like I want nothing but the extreme best for her. You know what? Me and my wife um has done something for me that I never thought. So a lot of people ask me, right? And, and I get dudes that ask me this a lot. And I don't have friends, right? I'm not I I'm big on titles. So if I tell you I deal with somebody, we we locked in. Um uh -huh. and so with that being said, I had a joker ask me, he like, yo. With all this attention, like with all of these women from all over the world, like, do you ever regret being married? And I said, bro, respectfully, um, I would never leave my wife. Like, like it's, it's, I've never met any woman in this world that can carry like my wife. And I'm not just talking about from a nurturing standpoint. I'm not just talking about a sexual standpoint. I'm not even talking about an aesthetic because my wife is beautiful. She's sexual. She's loving. She's caring. She's nurturing. And let's not forget she's fucking loaded, right? So with all of those things, right? It's not about that. Somebody, so I remember telling him, I said, well, one thing that I'm blessed, I'm blessed that I, I experienced money early. I experienced abundance of vaginas early. So all of this shit, like it don't, <laughs> it don't mean nothing to me. Like if right. I was to show you my DMs, you would be, first of all, I probably have about 20,000 people blocked first and foremost. But like, if I was to show you, I wake up every morning to squirting vaginas and big butts clapping and let me fly you out, daddy. And let me take you oh, here Lord. and you, let me stop you for one second. Only because that's the perfect segue to the next question, because you're touching on it. But when I ask it, that's going to allow you to expound more that's on fine. it. So does your fame and attractiveness create complications to your relationship? If yes, how do you manage them? And if not, what preventative measures do you practice? So I was in a real, um, okay, this is good. We're going to get deep, deep. I was in a real nasty relationship before my wife. And I won't say that it was nasty while it was going on, but it became very nasty um, towards the end and even to the present day, right? And I'm giving y'all exclusive shit that don't nobody got because I haven't talked about this, but we gonna do it today because fuck it, we in a building. Um, I, I came home from prison. I met a young lady while I was incarcerated. Uh, and I liked her. I liked her a lot. Was it a $2,500 young lady? Just asking. She, well, she was one that I was actually sending the money to. So one okay. thing about it, every woman has a role in your life, you know, just like every man that you meet has a role and everybody gets a different reaction. Um, and she actually had got on a live because she um, did a lot of foul stuff. And we'll get to that. But she actually got on a live and it, it, it's public, uh, doc, publicly documented that she said one of the things that made me love him, he was actually financially treating me better than the men were on the street. Because that's how good I had it in there. You know what I'm saying? I had damn near, I had damn near, um, pardon me, a $4,000 gambling habit a month in prison. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, with that being said, I met the young lady and everything about her to me was different from what I typically dated for. Um, she was chubby, but she was beautiful. Pretty girl. Um, wasn't really financially well off. Um, I really didn't like the environment that she lived in, but I liked her for her. And so it was crazy, right? Because... I had some cash cows before I came home. I could have went to DC. I could have went to LA. I could have went to Atlanta. I had a couple of chicks that basically told me, come home. I'll give you two years. All you got to do is come home and, you know, be my dude. Fuck me. Deal with me. And I'm like, you know, I chose love over the money for once in my life. Right. Um, Cause I really liked her. And so the funny, today. About, mm -hmm. the funny thing about that is I actually came home and chose to struggle with her. And so that's how I knew that the love was real because I could have took the finances. I had some situation, brand new bins, all of that waiting on me. I actually had some super decent situations, but it wasn't about that for me. I come from money, so my love can't be bought. So I actually came home. I came home. Um, I started selling hoodies. I started selling hoodies out the halfway house from the rich. Physically rich was my brand. Because if health is wealth, then we physically rich. That was my brand. I'm making little makeshift hoodies. I was selling them for 50 a wop. I'm bringing trash bags through the halfway house window. Because ambition is something that I, I'm going to hustle to the day that I die, right? So I'm doing that. I'm doing my big one. I get out the halfway house. Now, when I got the halfway house, you know, I kind of got more access to the world, but I was like, a lot of women were reaching out to me and I'm thinking, all right, well, this is free publicity. Let me do my big one. Um, I believe that she became overly jealous of my potential. Um, I, I, she, she had literally admitted to me, I don't want to share you with the world. I don't want you to have social media. And at that time, because I wanted our relationship to work, I actually considered not having social media. 
So like, if I would have stayed with her, none of, none of this exists. If uh -huh. I would have stayed with her, none of this exists, right? And so remember, I think that I, I don't know how long y'all been following me, but there was a post where I said that love is not enough. Right. Um, one day I was sitting in the living room and we arguing about social media and girls with fake bodies because that was her thing. She felt as if all I did was sleep with women with fake bodies and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I remember sitting there and she went upstairs and I was like, love is not enough. I'm like, I love her. I'm like, I do. But I'm not happy. I'm not I'm not being fulfilled. I'm like, I got dreams that I want to chase. And I said I told myself at that moment, I said, I don't want it for me to stay here right for 10 years faking it and just staying for love and realizing that i didn't trace my dreams or make it to the pinnacle or like you really get to where i was going and so i made a conscious decision to leave right and so i left and of course like any relationship you play the back and forth and i don't want to be here but you feel bad for leaving and did i make the right decision and da, da, da. i'm human like everybody else so i went back and this is the thing i left so classy i paid a rent then left I paid her rent, then left. Most jokers don't leave in style like that, right? I paid her rent, then left, and took a kid shopping before I left. And I wasn't in no good financial position at all. And I think another thing that propelled me out the door is because one thing you have to learn about a man, when you bruise his ego, those are some of the things that you'll never be able to undo. And I remember I was I was going, I was I had a job at LA Fitness, right? That was, that was my personal trainer at first. Um, and I'm going to work. And she had said something to me that stung me like deeper than ever. She was like, yeah, cause I'm out here struggling with a nigga and I ain't never did that, right? Um, and it, 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 it cut me so deep because I was proud to give my check to her. I was giving her my whole check. It wasn't much, but just to show her like, I, I wanted to say like, you know, I came home to struggle with you. You live in the hood. You live in a house that's 500 square feet. Like you live in a hood house. Like this ain't me. Like my grandmother came to me and was like, you've never lived like this. Like what made you? And I'm like, no, nah, my grandma live in a, a half a million dollar house. I don't come from that. We moved from Philly a long time ago. We've been about paper. I've been getting money all my life. So it was one of those things where like when she said it, I kind of looked at her and I'm like, so I tell her, I say, well, check this, right? When I leave you, you'll never get another nigga like me. I can promise you that hands down. But when you leave, I said, uh, Barb, I said, but when I leave you also, every chick that I deal with after you will blow you out the water, right? So this is the funny part. And, and, I, and I'm not going to get into this too long, but this is exclusive. So I've been married to my wife now for a little while or whatever the case may be. So out of nowhere, I'm going to just tell you how, how misery is, right? Because when you leave people, they don't expect for you to leave them and win. Like, you know how you wish somebody well, but you don't really mean it? You're being sarcastic. You know, you're like, yeah, I wish you well. There's a song by Labyrinth called Jealous, right? And he says, um, he says, uh, let, me, let, me, let me get this right verbatim, right? He says, um, I wished you all, he said, I wish that you get all the world can give. He says, uh, he says, but I always thought you'd come back and tell me that all you found was heartbreak and misery. Like he basically let her go. He like, leave, go, go explore the world. Cause he never thought that she, she would find anything better. And she did. And, 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 the, and the, basically the song is like, I'm jealous of the way that you are happy without me. Right. And so it's funny because this chick has went and publicly leaked new photos of me. She's leaked uh, 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 videos of me in the house playing around with like intimate moments with, you know, with boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, went and said, I never worked out a day in my life. I got light bulb 360, a BBL, said I broke in her house, raped her, why am I not in prison? All types of things. You feel what I'm saying? And I never really, um, it only hurt because my intentions were so pure. Uh -huh. like, like, if you're going to tell the story, like, don't wait till you haven't seen me in a year and some change to, to, to now it's giving groupie vibes. Like, you waited until I blew up. You, oh, I just want to speak up for awareness for everybody. No, you don't. You're mad because I'm happy, because we're loaded, because I'm everything that you, and you, you really wanted to be me. And that's why I left. The chick is doing Q&As on Instagram now. She's teaming up with some of the brokest, unsuccessful people. In they got a whole mob of bitter, bad-built bitches, and they try to come together collectively to destroy me, and it'll never happen because I'm pure. And if, you know, she told the world, I created him, I made... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, he's stupid. No, no, no. He's no, no, no. Go ahead. I had to get he's the stupid. four Bs together. We're going to make that a shirt for you, okay? Thank bitter, you. bad-built bitches. Um... But like I said, you know, I so wish true. with all of that being said, right? Thinking about the chapters that led up to where you are now, where you living now, and where you're you're catapulting to next, right? Because we on we we off of now, we on the next. Absolutely.
when you look at the mindset that drives your decision making, whether it's a collaboration on a podcast, it's a collaboration with a life partner, collabs in business, whatever it is. Are you doing it for the love or for the money? Because, and, I, and I'm and i going to put it in context like this. A lot of these young athletes, you were talking about the, um, the young lady that's, that's, that's with the baller, right? The young guy. Mm-hmm. What I hate the most about sports now, now I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nineties girl, right? So when AI was on the court, please understand that was my game. Okay. That was my guy. Okay. That was my game. The difference between what you got on the court now and what you had on the court then was you had more dudes playing for the love of the game and not coming in talking about where my checks. And so when you look at your life, when you look at your story and when you give advice to both men and women, but specifically women, do we go for the love or the money? Do we marry for love or for money? Do we connect and do we collaborate and do we pursue the chemistry based on the love or the money? Because they both got consequences. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about me once again. Um, I, I was in the street. Um, and I always tell people, even though I was to what I would like to believe successful in the street, I always tell people the reason why I was so good at selling drugs is because I would have did it for free. Um, I loved... I literally loved everything that came along with it. I literally loved being out there, interacting and talking with the people. I had finally found a place where I was accepted, where the misfit finally fit in. Mm -hmm. And so with this, I tell people right in life, you got got two type of people that wake up in the morning. You got people that get up and they sit on the edge of their bed and they putting their pants on slow and they putting their sneakers on slow because they hate that they woke up. They hate that they really had to see another day. Like, like, like it, like it bothers them that they had to see another day, right? But then you get people like me. I jump out of bed, right? Like I literally get up, I jump out. Of, hey, like I'm so full of life in the morning, right? Because not only would I do this for free, I didn't get into this for any monetary gain. I'm successful off of social media. When I get on here and say the things that I say. I don't gain anything from them. I'm praying that somebody can heal from my pain. I don't want nobody to go through the things that I go that I went through. You've never seen a post of me talking about drug dealing. You never see me talking about prison. You never see me talking about all my cars, all the women. I don't even glorify that stuff because it's not something that I'm ashamed of, but it's something that I grew past. It's something that I grew past. So absolutely, I would do it for free. Is the money going to come? Absolutely, because I'm a magnet to it. That's just regular. I'm going to get money to the day I die. That just comes with who I am as a person. My name Malik. Money is close to that. Malik and money just go, could they coincide? They go hand in hand. But anyway, what's but up? I love what you just said is I don't glorify it because I've grown yeah. past it. Something and so said. I think that that's something that's something to be said, and that's something for everybody. That that needs to be amplified, like real talk. Because Can I teach you something real quick, and, and I don't yeah, mean to cut you off because you the shit. And this interview is is amazing, right? Um, one thing that you have to understand, especially, and it may be in every city, but I come from Philadelphia. What we have in Philadelphia is a whole bunch of washed up ass niggas with dickies on and gray beards with no money telling the stories of everybody. First of all, we know those stories aren't about you because when you live the way that you're claiming that you live, you're either dead or in jail or you're somewhere handicapped or you're somewhere strung out or somewhere with half of your mind gone because the streets beat you the fuck up. It just is what it is. So what it is, is we live in a society, right, where is a is a is a phrase going around standing on business right especially when it comes to street stuff right and what it really is is you're standing on brokenness people that stand on business when it comes to street shit you're standing on broke oh yeah i ain't got no money but i'm sturdy yeah i ain't got no car or no house but i'm a real nigga though and i always tell these dudes you'll never go get a benz with a real nigga pass You'll never bury your mother with a real nigga pass. You'll never send your children to college with a real nigga pass. Like all of that, all of that, those bullshit. And what it is, is people have no identity outside of that. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I hate to even do this, but fuck it. It's the truth. For the same thing with the religion, the same thing with, with Islam, right? A lot of them, a lot of these chicks, and I'm going to get on a minute in the chicks. A lot of those chicks only garb up because they don't know how to dress because they don't got nothing to wear because they have no identity outside of the religion. And then my wow. thing is they, they pick and choose what they want to use out of their religion. How is it that we, we, we pray five times a day, but we skip one of the most major joints, which is backbiting? All y'all do is talk about each other, cut each other down. All y'all do is promote violence. Loon said it the best. He said, Philadelphia has the highest crime and murder rate that are that is Muslim on Muslim. Down to these women that garb up. And my wife is Muslim. I'm Muslim. 
she don't garb up every day because I don't force that. It's not that deep to me, right? But my thing is, if you're going to garb up, why is it skin tight? Why can I see your nipple rings through your fucking garb? Isn't the isn't the idea of you to cover it up and for it not to be seen? It's supposed to be loose fitting. You turning me on. I've never seen so many maxi dress garbs in my life. They twerking with the with the garb on. They out here twerking with the garb on. Never mind, but that's another story. But anyway, what's up? <laughs> hey, I, I, so, I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. I don't necessarily agree, but I want to make sure. And this, and I got this cool. out of you. Disagree. Disagree sure with I, me, please. I, I want to make sure I understood you correctly. Are you saying that there is no instance to where you put yourself aside and allow love to take over because you said that, hey, you know, love isn't enough. So that would put it completely out the window when it comes to compromise. Okay, I'm going to let this, um, and we're going to use social media because that's what you were talking about. I'm going to let the social media go. This is my dream, but I love you, so I'm going to let it go. So you're saying there's no instance where you would actually do that? I'm asking, not telling. I'm 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 picking love every time. But love by itself, no. What you have to understand, right? Um, and we can talk about unconditional love, right? And we're gonna get back to the social media thing because the original question was how does that affect my marriage, right? Um, but and yeah. I didn't forget you, right? But let, let's talk about love, right? Um, and let's talk about unconditional love. Um, I believe in our in our society, unconditional love is a slave mentality. And what I mean by this is I think that this was something that was developed by white slave masters. And the reason why I, why I really believe this is because when you're taught unconditional love, especially when it comes to family, especially as black people, you're taught that your family, no matter what they do, that's your family. Mom, he shot me, but that's your brother. You better love him. Mom, uh, he robbed me for 200,000, but that's your mother. And no matter what they do, you love him unconditionally. And if you don't love people with conditions, then what boundaries do you have? What systems do you have in place to ensure that they don't violate you again, right? And so the reason why I say that love is not enough, bro, is because I could love you to death, but I'm not happy. I could love you to death, but we're not growing. I could love you to death, but I'm not fulfilled. That is what life is about. Life is not about money. You need money. Money is a tool. But when, when you finally have money, you want all of the things that money cannot buy. Happiness, sanity, peace, relaxation, a peace of mind. You want, you want companionship. Love is not enough. Do you know how many people love this shit out of the person that they're with, but they don't respect them anymore? Do you know how many people love this shit out of the person that they're with, but they're not sexually attracted to them anymore, but they love them and they stay and people will let love imprison them. And I refuse to be a prisoner of love. Yo, you, you, you said, you said so much and I'm a, I'm a just chime in for the women and I'm gonna say a hundred percent fact because that's something that we do in the name of, I'm gonna go back to the term that you use, unconditional love. And in my opinion, unconditional love is unattainable. Mm. It's the same way that perfection is none of your business. Excellence is. Perfection is, that's that's the lane that God wrote and he owns. Excellence is what you've been called to. Nobody asked you to be perfect in all your ways and in all the things. No, but he did say, learn a more excellent way of living. And so when you talk about this unconditional love, the reality is, like you said, one is absolutely connected to boundaries. And if you don't have none, life is going to kill you. Two, when you talk about this unconditional love, let me ask you a question. And ladies, I want y'all to think on this real hard. The last time you gave the man that you knew was all the things that he was the one and you gave him unconditionally everything you had to give in the name of love. Was it reciprocated? Did you get it back? Or were you left on red? Just think about it for a second. So you're out here doing things that are unattainable. You're wasting your time, your energy, your money, your everything. And then you wonder why you don't trust love. You don't believe in love. You can't seem to find it or receive love. Because you had well, your, 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 com completely. I guess correct. I'm in my box. I guess I'm in my box. It's two against one. Okay. Uh, listen, first of all, if 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 you are in love, you in love, we are mm -hmm. in this together. If you don't like are it, we? Then, are if, we? If, yes, are we are. If you don't like it, woman. then 
Ask the woman whose man told her that he, ask the woman who said, whose partner said, I'm in love with you, but left her with all these kids, all these bills, all these responsibilities, and shitty ass self esteem because he was in love with her. Ask her what no, being in love with her. He told her he was in love with her to get what he wet ass he and probably a bunch of bills and a bunch of kids. Unconditional Listen. love gets you somewhere Listen. off in the clouds. That ain't real life. No, 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 no. He, she just went for the okie doke. Because if he was in love with her, he would not have left her for 10, 20 years. He wouldn't have did it. But a nigga that I've been married to for 10 or 20 years, I'm still going for the okie doke. He that good, he that thorough, that he could bullshit me for 10, 20 years? I mean, so so that would lead me to say, so I would have to ask you a personal question. What happened that made you leave? And that and that say, okay, was your eyes open? Was woman? it with another woman? You for a woman seen the So the, the being with somebody else, that might be the, the catalyst, or as they say, the straw that breaks the camel's back. But you knew that. You knew that when it was happening. You, that wasn't an epiphany. But what, what happened that made you actually get up and leave and take action? I told you, love is an action word. So whether that's loving him or loving yourself, it's all about the actions that align with the words coming out of your mouth. And what happened was she finally realized that she was worthy. She finally realized that she was the bag with or without him. She finally realized, like Truth was saying, you're not going to tell me nothing about me. All the stuff that I've been through, y'all don't need, y'all don't know the half of the stuff I've been through to be sitting in this seat and saying the stuff that I'm saying. But she realized the worth of all of that stuff. And so when you begin to realize who you are, when you begin to realize how worthy you are, you find it hard to sit around a bunch of niggas that don't recognize your self-worth. I'm not about to take a seat in general admission when the hell I'm supposed to be in VIP. What I look like? Listen, I'm in my box. It just got to be two against one because to me, love is enough. It's, it's, it, it, if you are true to the word and you are true and under love comes that respect, under love comes that loyalty, under love come, oh, matter of fact, loyalty don't come under love because I can love you and not be loyal to you. We'll talk about that later. Um, I am going to do what I got to do if my social media, and I'm only taking it back to social media because that was the topic, if my social media is bothering you and if I'm true to what I'm saying, then I'm going to let it go and then we got to find together, we got to find something that's going to put us on that financial status that has the social media has brought you to and the things that you view, how you utilize social media to get to where you are. We just got to find something else to do. That's what we got to do. Instead sure of us having a conversation to really get to the root of the fruit of why you are intimidated by how I show up on social, what's happening as a result of social and how we opening up opportunities to get this money and get to next levels with social. That's not no, a, that's not I'm a not, thing. I'm that's a you that. thing. Because you insecure, that. you jealous, you got problems that you don't really want to fess up. Like Truth was saying, you don't want to look in the mirror and deal with what you, what's really staring back at you because it's not about the fact that i'm on social everybody's on social your, your kid is on social it ain't about the fact that i'm on social it's about what you think is going to become a potential distraction what you think could potentially take me away from you and what is that that's you not playing your part in another area so guess what if you think that i'm about to be i'm, I'm about to be out of here because i'm looking at a bbl what is it that you're not providing that would even turn my head in that direction? Truth ain't about to go step out with none of these chicks when he got one at home. Period. It's nothing right, he can so, see on social so that's gonna that? make him mess up what he got at home. So, so if you find that that right there is an issue, remove that issue, and together, just like you so, use that same brain power to make mm -hmm. this platform, you can say, "Hey, I can think of something else to do the same identical thing." So let me, let me, let me, and, and they, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but this is how I know a part of you lacks self, self love, right? Um, in order to have self love, a part of you has to be selfish. I, I preach this to every single one of my clients. Um, selfish, you, oh, it's can, liberating. You, it's let liberating. Me, can, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. And I swear I'll let you go. I won't interrupt you at all. Yes, um, sir. in order to have self love, a part of you has to be selfish. Um, and I can even use women, but I can use men. Um, as, but I, I like to go off of women because women are some of the most selfless people that you'll ever meet, right? Um, I deal with a lot of women that try to recover after long relationships. They want to know how to date again. They want to know how to go about life again, right? And the reason why they get so lost is because if you're a good woman and I'm doing air quotations, you naturally mold to the man that you're dealing with, right? If you ask any woman, right, that's been in a long-term relationship with a man, if you say, what's your favorite football team? You know what football team she like? She like the one her man like. 
If you yep. ask her, if no, I'm being serious. If you ask her, what do you like to eat? I like pizza and wings. You, do you know good women lose their identity of who they are when they really get with a man? Because a man is a shepherd. He leads and women naturally follow. So a woman not only dedicates and loses herself to her man, but when the babies come, she's pulled in that direction. She loses her identity. Because if I ask a woman, who are you? Yeah. She'll say, I'm a great mother. I'm yep. a great wife. But she cannot tell you her identity outside of those things. So when I talk to these women, when I build these women back up, I encourage them to go out and find out who the fuck you are. Put your kids on a back burner. Put them goofy niggas on a back burner. I want you to go back outside and reinvent you. Find the things that bring you bliss because you lost a major part in yourself molding and giving and and and, and bending and, and being everything that everybody else needed you to be and you forgot how to be selfish. You forgot how to do things that were solely for you and your enjoyment. So down to the social media thing or any dream that you have, first and foremost, you don't love me if you want me to stop something that brings me pure joy, especially something that is not harmful to me. It'd be different if I told you, hey, day, I'm shooting heroin till I die. I'm going to fight you too. You supposed to fight me tooth and nail if you love me. You not doing it. But when I tell you, Social media is not hurting anybody. She said the most significant thing. What happens is something about what I do makes you insecure, right? So then what happens is as a real partner, if you're real mature, you'll try to include your partner. Hey, baby, look, it ain't even that deep. I'll put you on a podcast with me. I'll put you on a platform with me. I'll show you to the world. But that's not enough. You're dealing with people who are not satisfied. And mostly that are that's insecure people. No matter what you do, you cannot reassure an insecure person. Nobody that loves you will ever make you make yourself small in order to make them big, in order to make them feel satisfied. Your disappointment should never give them satisfaction. I love you. So when I love you, I love what you love. I like what you like. If, let me tell you something. My wife loves sex in the city. She love it. I hate seeing these wrinkled old white motherfuckers fucking. I can't stand it. But it makes her happy. So right. guess what? Now I be in there like, look at Carrie. She in there getting crazy. Now I done fell in love with it because this is what this is. Uh, this is another chance for us to bond. This is another chance for us to come closer. If this is what puts her at peace, that is a small compromise for the greater good. But it hurts nobody. You're thinking, and and and, and, and bro, I, I I I get it. Um, and there, I'm not. You know what? I'm I'm letting anyway. Next question. Because oh, I was no, about no, to give no, you no. a real therapy no, session. No, no, no I'm because like hold on, oh, you ain't gonna get away with anything. So listen, so. With everything that you said, the man being the shepherd, everything that the woman is giving up, um, we got the same football team because she's following you. She's following you. What, so this is actually two things I want to say. Would it actually hurt to let that one thing aside that actually hurts her? No matter her reasons, no matter how um, insecure she may be. No that's matter not realistic, day. Day. I'm not even speaking of to let something go. Media. Listen to I'm me. To of... let something go, no matter their reason. Are you crazy? But listen, no. though. She done gave but... up. She done gave up her whole, whole identity. She done Did gave up. Did you put a gun to her head? Did you put a gun to her head? Day. At what point? What? Let's 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 go through. Let's go through the marriage vows, right? At what point in the marriage vows do you say, "I, in order to gain you." I agree to lose me. Where is that in the vows? It's nowhere. But you said yourself that the woman ah, loses whoa, 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 whoa. It's nowhere. Therefore, this phantom idea of marriage and relationship and commitment that people are succumbing to on a day-to-day -day basis that has everybody out here broken, jacked up, and like, like True said, unable to truly identify themselves. If I had to go identify my child's body, God forbid, I know my child from the hair follicles to the toenails. I know everything about that person that makes that person that person. When we decide to lose sight of and lose track of everything that makes us who we are from the hair follicles to the toenails, Houston, we have a problem. I agreed mm. to follow you. I did not agree to fucking lose me in the process. That wasn't a part of the deal. Here's the bottom line for me and why I'm in my box. I believe that if you truly love a person, and I'm not saying say I love you, if I truly love you, there should be nothing 
no matter what it is that I am not willing to part ways with if it does not mean if it means for you to be sad or happy. It Spoken is like a man. Let, let Spoken me, let like a man. Let and I'm going to tell you why. You, you literally had the luxury to say shit like that as a man because guess what? If it means that I could, I need to just give up this in order to get that. Listen, as a woman, I don't have the luxury to function like that because some of the shit that you want me to give up is going to mean my kids don't eat because you don't want me to go on social because you don't want me to go to work because you don't want me to work long hours. You don't want me to get a promotion. You don't want me functioning like this. You don't want people to know how intelligent and dope as hell I am because it makes you intimidated because it makes you look like less of a man because my vocabulary is bigger than yours. I'm not giving up shit that's about to feed me and my kids from a legacy perspective in order to keep your ego intact. Hell to the no. But but how can you say you love a person? It, so you're saying it that, that ain't got love. What Tina said? So what love got to do with that? Ain't got nothing to do with love. That is nothing. That is that's why. called that's called preservation. That's called protection, and that's called peace of mind. Because at the end of the day, if I can't look myself in the mirror and know that I gave a hundred percent, I put it all on the table. I poured myself out a complete drink offering. What am I doing? I'm out here playing. I'm not living. I'm existing, and that's not what the marriage vows say. That's not what I signed up for. Period. That, that is why I'm in my box because I'm not saying let anybody go without. I'm saying, hey, let's find you out. You saying let me go without. You want me to go without. Why what brings you, me joy? You, you want me to go me. without. What makes me you. you are a part of me. I am you. You are me. I am not going to let my wife or no, anybody we're one, that, we're, that we're, I we're love a unit. go without. We're a unit, but I'm not you and you're not me. I still get to maintain my sense of self, purpose, and identity in spite of being married to you, in spite of being in relationship you brought, with you. In, you brought up the marriage vows. Right. You Let's know do for it. yourself that in the marriage vows, the Bible says that he will leave his parents and become one with one his flesh. partner. We uh -huh. are one. So like I said, we I got the same name, 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 nigga. We if one. I look good, you look good. If you look bad, I look bad. So I don't uh -huh. want nothing. I don't want you to ever look bad. I always want to look good. I am always going to look good. And you're I ain't saying you want me to look bad, but you do want me to look less than. You do want me to look a little smaller than. No, you no, do no, no. You are going to be. You want me to look always to the level of what you can handle. Because if I come out looking like uh uh uh, what was the name? Diamond and Players Club. If I come out on that note, you're gonna be like, oh hell no, where are we going? You ain't going looking like this. Whereas if I'm on Truth Arm and I'm just I'm you're, just playing uh, Angels and you like to say, if I'm on I'm Truth, if I'm on Truth Arm and I come out looking like Diamond, Truth gonna be like she 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 she, she the shit ain't she? But guess guess who she is? She mine. That's me. He's confident enough I, to be like, my, yeah, my wife just stepped out her, her stomach out. And? And she look good, don't we? And? So, I'm you know what's funny? We both going to have our stomach. I'm going to have my shirt open some, too, Jess. Are we going to look some, good? Somebody. That's the, point, that's the point I'm so, making. Listen. Which day which you, have, you have that slave mindset, Day. Help me out. Right? Talk to me. You have the slave mindset because everything that you just try that's that false, unconditional love. It, it's basically... Do whatever I do for the sake of love. Do whatever I want you to do for the sake of love. And this is why I tell you, you have, and, 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 I, and I mean this in the most polite way, you have self-love issues because you don't know how to put yourself first. Like, you got to learn. Like, this is my thing, right? Um, I went from making uh, 29 to 30-something dollars an hour, right? Working 12 to 16 hour shifts, no life, no nothing, not happy. But, well, I was happy because I was grateful. Um, right <laughs> to making damn near fifty thousand dollars a month. So imagine if I would have picked love, right? I, I got financial freedom, bro. I go anywhere I want to go, when I want to go do it, when I feel like doing it. I can literally sit, I'm in front of my I'm in my office right now. I can sit in front of my computer for the next three years and never have to leave my house. And, and everything is well taken care of. All my bunts is, bills is paid months in advance. All my every everything is up to date. My wife say she wanna go to the, the I don't man, wherever we out. When we want to do it, I get to actually raise my kid. Like, so could you imagine if I would have picked love? Because guess what? You know what? I'm going to compromise all of this. I'd have been sitting somewhere looking crazy, working a fucking dead end job. And I would have started resenting my partner. Because here, it is. this is what would have happened 10 years later. Damn, I probably could have. I probably could have really been true hurts, but now I'm just regular ass Tony with this nut ass job, with this nut ass <laughs> marriage that I don't want to be in. You should not be a slave to love, bro. Go ahead. I'm gonna be quiet. So, so are you saying, and I'm asking, I'm not telling. So yeah, you can do what you want. As, as smart as you are, um, the hustler mentality, are you telling me that if you would have said, I love you, 
we gonna cut this out. Do you really? And I don't believe this for you. I believe that, like nature, you would have found a way and still been the fucking man. But Are why? you saying that you would have? You would why? not have. Why should I have to find another way when I have a way? For the don't for the nobody city. listen. <laughs> don't don't nobody have a straight. Let's 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 look. If, if I'm breaking out of jail, right? And I'm like, yo, look, my legs work. I'm fucking the guard. I got all of these access codes to these doors. I got a straight path out. But you say you just my celly. I love you to death. You like, man, I'm in a wheelchair. We're going to have to dig through the tunnel. Hey, bro, some motherfuckers got to get left back. Every Sometimes everybody can't come, come in order for you to get to where you're going. And so this is why I tell you, in order to have real self-love, Sometimes you got to be selfish and that may sound fucked up. But one thing you have to understand is that caskets don't come with bunk beds, bro. When we leave this motherfucker, I'm leaving by myself. Then my wife's not getting buried in a bunk bed on top of me and we going in the ground together. So like she said, yes, we are one. We do come together collectively, but we also have to thrive and do things that make us happy as individuals as well. Because this is how, if the relationship doesn't work because every relationship is not a happy uh, uh, ever after, you still know who the fuck you are. You know how to bounce back. You got people that literally get into it. And we talked about this. There is no such thing as an evacuation plan. I am never leaving my wife. For one, there ain't no reason to go. I am extremely happy, but I never lost sight of who I am. And you talked about the social media thing. The reason why we're able to mesh so well she doesn't give a fuck about social media. She's a boss in real life, bro. She, she, she'll tell you, I make millions. I don't give a fuck about none of that. I don't need it. It doesn't mean anything to do with me. So you ask, how does she deal with the success? And how does she deal with the fame? She has motion. The only people that will be upset with you having fame and money and all of that are people who don't have anything going on for their self or people who have too much time on their hands to be going through every comment and to be going through every follower and to be worrying about DM. When we get in the bed at eight o'clock at night, the phones ain't even nowhere near in our hands. This is nothing but another job. And she knows that. And once again, like, like she could have had any man that she wanted in this world because she's not lacking those opportunities. I could have had any woman that I wanted. I chose her. I don't post her uh, 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 for, for, for validation if my chick bad. A lot of times I post her because I want women to stop DMing me. I didn't have to post her. I didn't have to show her to the world. I had a chick literally jump in the comments. I think it's so disrespectful. Your wife got her butt out. Your, your butt never looked like my wife's. <laughs> so with that being said, I, I'm cool with that because that's mine and, and, and that belongs to me. And I understand what you're saying. Um, but you and, and another thing that men and women have to understand, you cannot complain about how somebody's getting their money if you're not willing to replace that income. Period. But next question. Period. All right. And this is where this is where men get it messed up because you hear a lot of um you, you heard, you know, the, the oh, what's your love language? And, and men, the first thing they, you know, everybody talking about respect, respect, respect. Are you respectable? Are you respect worthy? <laughs> giving me to respect. If you're not giving me anything, what you expect me to do? Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. What are we talking mm. about? My love language is reassurance. <laughs> <laughs> My love language, language is reassurance. Mine is it's affirmation. Right. And those things come with an enhancing of who you are, of what you already bring, of what you do well, and what's appreciated about you. It ain't about you validating me. It's about you reassuring or affirming me into who I already am and who I'm evolving to be. There's a difference. Mine right, is so reassurance. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. All right. So this question is actually for both of y'all because you said what you just said. So you got to answer this too, strategist. All right. Y'all ready? <laughs> All right, balancing various roles in your life, what strategies do you employ to seamlessly fit all the parts together and maintain a healthy relationship? And truth, I heard you say one of them, eight o'clock, phones are put away when y'all in your bed together, phone. So that I guess that would be one of them. I, I think that people get the false belief that I'm on social media all day. Um, what you have to understand that is unique about my content, it is not scripted. I don't write it down. I don't even think about, bro, I could literally be brushing my teeth and an idea come to my head. I get on there. That is a minute and 30 seconds out of my life. Literally, like that's a minute and 30 seconds out of my life to the phone down. 
because I'm probably I got to go work out twice a day. I got to go do this, go do that. I'm, I'm putting business plans together. I'm putting real estate shit together. I got like so much shit to do. But it just so happens that the social media thing comes effortlessly because I'm not trying to. It's, I don't have to get on here and pretend like you got people that literally got to get on here. They got to write it down. They got to have a makeup right now. I get on there over here all over my head. Now, mind you, I'm fly nigga off, off of social media. So it's funny, right? Because if you watch my post, I remember vividly I had a. Uh, I always got my truth hurts hoodies on because I wear my shit. Um, and I remember somebody was like, um, what did I do? Oh, I put a picture of me up in the gym. And they was like, God damn, we didn't know all that was under the hoodie. I'm like, because I don't, I'm not on here for that. I could literally be one of them niggas on Instagram, shirt off. I don't got a thirst trap for what? Like, I, like, but what I'm saying is like, if you get it misconstrued, you'll probably think I'm just a nigga that wear hoodies. But if you know me in real life, no, like that nigga been throwing that shit on for years. Like, it's just, this is, I don't give a fuck. I'm not painting my, I'm not an actor. I'm not a Hollywood. I am literally just me. And I think that that's why I'm so relatable. Cause I look like you. I look like me. I look like everyday life. I could get on, I could get on here and be corny. I got diamonds and rollies and oh, I got all that shit too. I just, it don't mean shit to, when, when you've had it for so, it becomes, re, it's regular shit. But anyway, I'll let the strategist answer. Ask me your question again, sir. <laughs> All right. I shall ask the question again. Uh -huh. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Malison, various roles in your life. What strategies do you employ to seamlessly fit all the parts together and maintain a healthy relationship? And so what I heard you say was, being a woman, how how do I <laughs> be a woman? Um, and so basically, I show up and I let the day give me what it's going to give, and then I give it back. So there's no such thing as seamless. That's see, uh, the I think a large part of the problem with men and women and communication and all of these mindsets and stuff that we perpetuate, especially on social, is we live in a clear and Cliff Huxtable dynamic, right? It's a phantom. That's a TV show. It was scripted. To your point, Truth, it was scripted. It ain't real life, right? And like I told y'all before, my, my podcast is called Creatives Unscripted. Why? Because a creative is like you said, a person that as soon as I open my eyes, ideas and stuff are downloading. I'm walking down the street. I'm looking at the curtains. I'm cooking dinner and I'm, I'm getting some kind of major movement dropping, right? Unscripted because that's real life. Real life don't come with a script. It don't come with a manual. So how do I maintain it? I stay ready for it. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. If you understand that when you wake up, it's going to give what it's going to give. And you just got to be prepared to give it back. So I come with a, I come laced with a, a skill set that allows me to navigate the terrain of life from day to day, from moment to moment, from level to level. And that's the principles apply, whether you're talking about business, personal, whatever you're doing. So you live a principle based life. You tap into the who you are to, to the point of what you were saying a little earlier, not losing your identity, not uh, losing what makes you special, what makes you unique, what makes you a force to be reckoned with. Right. And you get you serve that back to life. So life, we playing tennis today. OK, you just served up something that was coming a little fast. But guess what? I'm ready for this. This is what I do. So you're not never going to catch me off guard. And sometimes I might have to play a little bit harder. But that's what life is all about. Playing harder is what makes you level up. So in being that now you heard everything she said right so just go for both both of y'all so and doing all these powerful intelligent smart things that you do is there anything that you intentionally do to make sure everything is good in the relationship not allowing all the things that you do to interfere be it doing your real estate um having that minute and 30 seconds out the day to put something up on post, doing all your paperwork and everything without forgetting your significant other. Is there anything that you intentionally do? Okay, I did this. Let me mm -hmm. go out for ice cream, a real cheap date, and go so, just talk. Like, is there anything that you purposely I, do? Yes. I, I, like you, you have to be intentional, um, especially in a relationship but even more so in a marriage, right? Um, because especially for two entrepreneurs, like I don't know how it is for people working nine, nine to fives, um, but entrepreneurs, there there is no set schedule. So right. whereas though you go from nine to five, I might go from nine to nine, I might pull a 24 hour shift, right? And so it's one of those things that for one, I believe that if you're in a marriage and if you're in a relationship, you have to date your partner for the rest of their life, right? Um, but I've learned, right, to take advantage of the small moments, right? So I'm so intentional 
I, I remember my wife is washing the dishes one day. Uh, and I was like, you know what? That might be a window. Instead of me just sitting in the bed, letting her wash the dishes, I go in there and sit with her. I'm drying her while we talking. I'm sparking up a conversation because this is a window for communication. This is time. Like she's washing clothes. All right, babe, let me come. In. I'm laughing. I'm, I'm helping. I'm folding. I'm putting the fabric. So, but this is our time. So this is how you steal these extra moments. Like it only works if you work it. So it's just so many different things through the course of the day. Babe, I'm about to go get on a treadmill for an hour. Come with me. Let's talk. You know what? I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to walk at your pace just so we can have that because you have to create that because you'll get lost in time and space. So you absolutely have to be intentional. We take a lot of trips. Um, and a lot of people don't know, I, I really would have been doing the podcast in person, but I'm on federal house arrest because I took a trip to Puerto Rico and, and this, this, this stalker chick called my PO and told on me and all this crazy stuff. But that's a whole nother situation God. but um so this is what made me but i'm such a hustler i improvise look i done made another whole other platform for the podcast so i'm cool with that because now i can reach around international now so they don't like when people like when you're blessed when you're really blessed people think that they can stop you but i'm unstoppable i'm unbreakable i'm unshit like i laugh at it now because now i'm gonna have unlimited content we just sat here for two hours maybe three there's so many questions that i want to ask i just don't know where y'all battery life because i got some questions for y'all um and like i'm how about this, right? Fuck that. I got a question. How do y'all feel about integrating families? And when I say integrate, matter of fact, fuck that. We'll get on to that. How important is it for your parents or your children to like your partner? Please, one at a time. And I'm going to repeat it because this moment is going to go viral. So please, uh, uh, day day, you go first. Uh, strategist, you go second. How important is it for your children? and your parents to like the partner that you are dealing with. Day Day, please, you have the floor. I'm going to say I, I really don't, it's not important at all. It's not important that they like her. Um, and I'm sorry to do this, Truth, but it's just what it is. I actually heard this on your podcast. This is how I felt, but I've I got to use your words. I'm not in a relationship with her mom, and she's not in a relationship with my mom. Like, I had actually stopped dealing with my mom because my mom did not like her. We've been together 24 years. My mom was like, don't do it. Um, I, my mom did not like her, not even a little bit. I'm like, mom, this is going to be my wife. Like, what, what's it, what's it going to be? And she chose to be upset. So guess what? I did not put my wife through that. I didn't go over there. I, did, I, did, I barely talked to my mom. So that is my truth. It doesn't matter if if parents like or not, because like you said, I'm not in a relationship. Hold on, how you say? I'm not sharing bodily fluids with my mom. I'm giving it all to her. So it doesn't really matter if she likes her, don't like her. What about whatever. your children? I feel what about your children? About the children. I, I feel as would. though if you have a child. And I am about to be raising this child. I'm about to be disciplining this child because you're definitely not going to walk and do what you want and we live in a house together. I'm going to be disciplining this child. We have to have a relationship and it has to be good until that child is 18. Now, if the child is over 18, fuck him. I don't give a fuck about it. I don't, I don't need to have a good relationship with you. You ain't got to have a good relationship with my wife. We're going to be together forever. We're going to be married. We're going to be walking around naked while you're gone, having a good old time. So I don't That's mean her kid. I don't mean her kid. I'm talking about your kid, right? Your uh -huh. kid. It, like when you're in the dating proce process, probably transitioning into being in a relationship. Because we're integrating at this point. Because if we're in a relationship, we're probably going to be bringing them around. and all. Like, do if, if your daughter or your son or whoever does not like your partner, is that a no-go? And how about this? This is the better question. If your partner does not particularly like your child, is that an issue? That's a big issue for me. I'm sorry. I know you say, I know what you say. Don't worry I'm about it. Say what you my, say. My, my kid, my kids gotta like you. They don't like you, you gotta go. My children okay. are very good judgments of character. Talk by personally and say, and she can better fight. than you. Your kids are better judgments of character than their father. But listen, though, so you play chess. I'm like, what do I go ahead? Though. Okay, so you know for yourself that when you are in the game of chess, the person that's standing on the outside looking in see things that you may not see. 
And I am a firm believer that if you are in a relationship, the person on the outside looking in can see things that you may not see. So if my daughter, if Danaya says to me, uh, dad, yeah, that's not the one. She this, she this, she that. Guess what? She ain't the one. I trust my that daughter wholeheartedly because I instilled things into her that I live by myself. And if she don't like it, she, you got to go. And you better not say nothing stupid because she can fight. I told her myself. Okay. Uh, the, the strategist, how do you feel about those questions? Do I need to ask them again? Nah. So okay. I'm just going to tell you, I, first of all, I perceive the thing from a whole nother vantage point, right? You're talking about your, your, your family and your kids and them having to like your partner. Here's the bottom line. I hear what you're saying, Day. Like, no, I instilled this in my kid, and I'm not married to the, you know, to the in-laws or to the whoever, whoever. So, what it boils down to is this: No, they don't have to like them. Why? Because there's some aspects of this relationship that ain't none of your damn business that you're never going to see. I'm not going to. I'm not going to talk to my child about my sex life with my partner. That should. That's not a conversation we about to have. I'm not going to talk to my parents about my sex life with my partner. That ain't a conversation that's none of your business, right? And from a from a provider's perspective, from a partnership perspective, from a wisdom perspective, if I decide to marry you or uh, come into a relationship with you at a certain level because of stuff that I need to learn from you, it's stuff that I need to lean into that you're doing and that you're doing well, that I'm trying to get my foot in the game in the door, it got shit to do with whether my parents like you, my kids like you, my dog like you. I got things that I need to get from you. And it's something about you that's about to enhance me in a way that that's going that's going to be what lasts, right? Whether we last or not, it's going it, the lessons that I learned. They you can't take that from me. So I'm not worried about whether you like them and she like them and my girls and all the some stuff. It's just my decision. It's personal, and that's where boundaries come into play, and that's where wisdom comes into the equation. I ought to have judgment and character i ought to have a level of wisdom because why am i first of all by the time you get to meeting my kids that right there because you ain't just meeting my kids and we just met two days ago at the club so that ain't happening so if you can last long enough to meet my people then y'all ain't gotta like it but y'all gonna respect that this is my choice period so i just want to pick you mind if i piggyback off of that yeah go ahead um, so I, I love what you said. Um, I probably couldn't have said it any better myself. My thing is this with these children, um, and these in-laws, right? I think that a lot of people, when, when they say the word child, um, especially at our age, our kids is 15, they're teenagers. Um, and I don't know about you, but I know for a fact that some of these kids are unlikable, um, respectfully. And I think that people forget that. <laughs> Maybe your kid is really not that fucking likable. So what happens is you go into it like, oh, well, if my if my son don't like you or my daughter don't like you, I can't. How about I don't like your fucking kid? But once again, and down to your in-laws, do I have to be cordial with them? Yes, but I don't have to like them. Do I have to let it show that I don't like them? Of course not. I love my wife. I, I love everything that she loves, but I, you cannot force people to be happy-go-lucky about some shit that they don't want to be happy-go-lucky about. And so a lot of kids, and fuck the teenagers, we can get down. Some people got some badass five-year-olds running around. They disrespectful, no home yep. training, and a lot yep. of people are letting these badass kids ruin their relationship. A lot of these people are letting their children have too much input in their relationships, and this is what you have to understand. Your baby's going to grow up Go get dickmatized, go get pussy whipped, and it be fuck mommy and fuck daddy, and they're not trying to hear nothing you talking about, just like you shouldn't be hearing nothing that she that they talking about. And when she said boundaries, I think that society, I'm, I'm an 80s baby. I think you're older than me, Day. Um, I'm not sure. You probably don't, you look younger than me, but I, I'm not sure. But with that being said, when I was a child, a child had a child's place, and it damn sure was not to be speaking about anything that my grandmother was doing romantically, financially, lifestyle-wise, or any of that, because that what that led up to was me getting punched in my fucking mouth immediately. So with that being said, even certain conversations, like I remember being 15, 16, I'm outside shooting niggas and everything, but when I came in the house, yes, ma'am, 
Yes, man. I feel like <laughs> yeah. that shit is the, yeah. I'm, it I'm keeping real. it a hundred. Period. I'm keeping it a hundred. I'm so, like, I, I, like, go ahead. So what I what I've done. So the reason why my daughter. Um, opinion means so much to me because from a young age when I tell you I kept it all the way 100 with her from the age of 12 years old I kept it 100 we had conversations I opened this door you know how you said you know there's things that is none of their business I opened the door with her right. and shared things that was none of her business and in turn she shared things that I want to be none of my business. I don't even want to know half the shit that she tells me. So we have an open relationship that is so open. It's like none other relationship, child, father relationship you will ever see. Um, she tells me things that I, when I, I swear to God, I really don't even want to know. But she shared because I opened that door. So in turn, if, and, and, and God forbid, you know, me and the, her mother does not work out and I'm talking to a woman, I am truly going to go to her and say, what do you think? I'm going to ask her opinion. She would never disrespect me and be like, yo, dad, she got to go. No, she's not going to do that. But I am going to go to her because I value her opinion so much. I am going to go to her. What do you think of X, Y, and Z? What so here's the difference. Here's the difference. I'm not, I, you, can, you can open the door. You can create a foundation for open communication. I'm, I'm, I'm for all of that with your kids, right? More parents need to have straight up, straight no chaser conversations with their kids. I'm all for that. However, no conversation. I like there that. will be no time in her young life or her a 